Okay, thank you everyone for staying till the end of the day. And right now I'm going to be leading a, really a discussion, so I don't have much talk to give, it's just a very brief introduction on the Surface Ocean Lower Atmosphere Study, or SOLAS program. I'm a chemistry professor at Wellesley College. I look at gas tracers and trying to understand how we can use them to quantify biological productivity in the ARC gas exchange. But really today I'm here in my role as the recently minted USA representative to SOLAS. Emmanuel Boss is regretful he can't be here today. He's on the US SOLAS steering committee and Veronique Garçon is the executive scientist of SOLAS. So what is SOLAS? I like to think of SOLAS as sort of what OCB is to the American carbon cycle community. SOLAS is to sort of a wider science community on the international level. So just like how OCB, we have an IPO, we have a steering committee, and we look at scientific questions looking at the ocean carbon cycle. For SOLAS, there is an international steering committee. And the questions on SOLAS are really to try to look at what are the links and feedbacks between the atmosphere and the ocean. There was a new science plan for SOLAS. So SOLAS has been around for about 15 years. And a new SOLAS plan has recently been released called SOLAS 2015 to 2025. And it spells out the science among five major themes. And what I want to talk to you about today is how much overlap there is between OCB and many of these SOLAS themes. And in particular, what SOLAS can do to really be useful to the OCB community. So to know how, to, how it can be useful, you need to know a little more about it. So let me just talk about these themes briefly. So theme one, where most of the overlap with OCB occurs, is in the, it's called the greenhouse gases in the ocean. And here's a little schematic showing CO2, N2O, or methane. So I'll elaborate on this in a moment, but essentially if you study any aspect of how the ocean affects CO2, you can fit into theme one. Theme two is talking about ARC exchange and mass and energy. Theme three is about how atmospheric deposition and other emissions released by land can affect the ocean, such as ship emissions. Theme four is really looking at the atmospheric side, looking at cloud chemistry, ecosystems, and aerosols. And theme five is almost the reverse of theme three. It's about how what the ocean is emitting can affect atmospheric chemistry. And overall, the focus is really on understanding these interactions between the ocean and the atmosphere, and specifically biogeochemical and physical coupling. So as I said, much of OCB research fits into theme one. Here's a schematic showing, it looks very much like many of the schematics we saw yesterday. And just to sort of drive this home, this is from the SOLAS literature, their science plan on theme one. You can, I highlighted many of the days of the OCB meeting and where it comes on this figure. So you can see day one, we talked a lot about particle production and flux. On day two, we talked about CO2 uptake, about freshwater runoff, and about some of the convective mixing. Day three, I had to do this before I saw day three's talk, so I'm a little light, but we talked about, I knew we were talking about denitrification and deoxygenation, and we now might also be able to add more about how the atmosphere, such as the monsoons, are really interacting with the ocean. So there's many ways to get involved in SOLAS, but I can mention them briefly at the end, but as I said, I'm really eager to hear about your ideas. But I did want to just mention some SOLAS-sponsored events that you may be interested in attending. So every two to three years, there's an open science conference. It's an international conference about SOLAS science among all these different themes. The one was just recently this past September in Kiel, and so I don't quite know, nobody quite knows when the next one will be, but I'll look out for it in the sort of two to three year time frame. But very soon, there's three targeted SOLAS workshops. So these are workshops sponsored by SOLAS, international workshops coming up. In Brussels in October, there's one on science and society. So anybody who was fired up by Heather's talk earlier today and wanting to do more of interacting their science with society, this would be a great workshop to go to. The deadline for the application is next week. So let me know if you want the details and I can forward those to you. Then coming up in April in San Diego, there's going to be a workshop on sea ice. It's joint with the sea ice group, looking at the biogeochemical and physical interactions of sea ice. And then in Carges and Corsica in May, there's going to be a workshop on air sea fluxes. Also, many of you may be happy to know that the much beloved SOLAS Summer School is coming back. It is being organized for July 23rd to August 3rd, 2018. 
So the Celeste Summer School is a great opportunity. There's been six of them so far. About 10 to 12 US graduate students have gone each year. I was one of them. Just a show of hand. I know there's a few other summer school participants. You can see there's a number of summer school participants in the audience. And so if you're a student, they're really aimed at graduate students and early postdocs. So if you fall in that list, definitely apply to go. And if you are um, more senior than that, encourage your students. I also have been told that I can pass names of anyone who wants to lecture. I don't know if these names will be taken, but if anybody wants to go to Corsica for two weeks and talk about Celeste Deems, let me know. <laughs> I will forward your name on. I've also been told by the Celeste IPO that we do have some limited amount of funds for early career researchers to attend some of these workshops. So if you'd like to go but you just don't have the money, let me know and I'll see what I can do. Okay, that's all the content delivery I wanted to give you. So now what I really want is an active discussion, and I know it's hard to be active this late of a long day, but how SOLAS can be useful. Because really in SOLAS, we want to be more useful to the US community. SOLAS is really vibrant in a number of countries, England, France, Europe, Japan, and it's not really vibrant in the USA, but we would like to change that. And the best way to change that is to be useful. I know everybody is very busy, and so it's hard to get excited about something that you don't see any use for. So to run this discussion just a little differently, because you've all been sitting and listening for a lot of today. Before we have a general discussion, I'd like you to turn to your neighbor, the person next to you, before you, and behind you, and actually talk. So everybody has to talk. And around this question, what do you think SOLAS can do for you or the OCB community? Go ahead, I should hear murmurings. <laughs> So there's one current member, and then there's another one they're finalizing. I know, I don't know how to turn it off. Okay, I hear some voices, which is good. Can somebody report back from the different groups or pairs? You can say what your neighbor said if you thought what they said was more interesting than what you said. Can somebody run mics? Okay. Do you need a mic? I don't Yeah, I think that's great. The themes of exports really closely align with theme one in SOLAS. And given we were told to try to garner, if we support exports, to try to garner appreciation for it, I think that's. I have a question about the profiling flows. What would be useful for SOLAS to do in terms? So SOLAS, unfortunately, doesn't have much money. So like, we can't actually buy a SOLAS float, so. Well, Online people. <laughs> it might not be on. Hello. 
Oh, uh, uh, air sea fluxes. So uh, to the extent that you know, floats can provide us information on oxygen. I think Seth Wyshynski has a nice poster about air sea oxygen flux uh, up over in Clark and Jorge had a talk, you know. So to the extent that air sea fluxes are a soulless activity, Floats can give us a global kind of Oh, I 100% yeah. agree with that. I just know yeah. what can SOLAS do to be useful to the float. Oh. I definitely think the oh. floats can be useful oh. to SOLAS. It's oh. going oh. the reverse. Can SOLAS be what useful can, for what the can, Well, I mean, the, the, so there is this move towards the global program. And with, I mean, SOLAS can, can you know, sort of actively, uh, a SOLAS workshop, for example, on floats and fluxes, for mm -hmm. example, would be a. Okay. <laughs> but this is sort of in the same theme, but, but what we discussed was perhaps having some sort of joint workshop in the summer that's both OCB and SOLAS. Um, the fact that there's very few of our European um, collaborators here at this meeting indicates that there needs to be more connectivity between the US and the European communities. Um, and also, those of us who went to the summer school were lamenting the fact that we hardly ever see the people who we went to the summer school with who are not American. Mm -hmm. So reestablishing that connectivity at the early career level is also important. That's a great idea. Just building on that, maybe one way to accomplish that with the summer school participants is, you know, at the ocean sciences meeting or something, having a, like a little reunion activity, you know, kind of bringing people back together that way. That's um, or in incorporating, you know, floats into the summer school like workshop <laughs> series. <laughs> New put, put Ken to work on that one. <laughs> so sponsoring a workshop is a great idea. Would people want it to be like an extra day or two at the end of OCB so that you only have to be here once? Or would you rather a completely separate workshop so that you have time to devote to it and you don't have to be away any longer? Bill? I, I kind of hesitate to say this with this badge on. Um, <laughs> but I think that... Um, what SOLAS can do for the OCB community is try to uh, try to gather a grassroots um, uh, initiative for some sort of funded activity, something to do. Uh, talking is fine, reconnecting is fine, um, money makes things happen. So, uh, so I think that you know there's a lot of talking, and I, I mean. I personally was involved in the Canadian SOLAS program um, when I was at Dalhousie before I moved back to the States. And, and that was a funded activity. We put things in the water. We did an iron addition experiment, looked at dimethyl sulfide. But what brought the community together was uh, a common activity, a common research goal. So I think that SOLAS in the US needs to start a discussion on how to gather the grassroots support for to do something. We can, we can talk forever, and, and it's nice. And I like workshops as much as the nice. And, and anyone who knows me knows that I love to talk. So, <laughs> so, so don't laugh, Ken. I see you. Um, anyway, um, but I think um, the SOLAS, uh, a, a workshop sponsored by SOLAS should have a goal of, of producing ideas that could be, you know, funded for, you know, the use of floats to answer a specific question, things like that. I think that, that, that bringing the community together to try to find something to do um, is actually creates a lot of, uh, a lot of excitement. Uh, although it's, you know, so anyway, that's. I have a sort of throwaway line. What about using the joint energy to get DIC absorption by the ocean in the IPCC report. I mean, no, no, I'm talking to everybody. I mean, that just shocked me today to find out that the, the key role of the ocean in taking up half of the anthropogenic carbon that's been emitted is omitted from um, some of the key, you know, from, the, from the COP, sorry, from the COP, you know, in the, in the um, COP 21 discussion. I thought that was pretty. I think SOLAS is moving in part because of pressures from Europe, where SOLAS is now being funded by Future Earth, which, which has a high um, impact on society being important for it. That, like, that's why there's this conference in Brussels on science and society. I think that there is a push to try to reach out and connect more to social scientists and do more public outreach. But uh, I'll pass that on. Yes, Bob? 
Yeah. Uh, this is something on a little different level, but um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, Bill Landing from GeoTraces and Alex Baker and Solas have been trying to work together to combine aerosol data sets. And I haven't been directly involved, but in the conversations I have sort of been peripheral to, it seems that some of the, the Solas aerosol data at BODC have kind of gotten buried and lost. And one of the things that maybe Solas could help with without a whole lot of money would be to emphasize to BODC or whoever is handling the data that it's it's the value of having all these data readily available to the community. And if the databases can be combined, putting SOLAS and GeoTraces together even better into an easily accessible common database. I mean, I realize aerosols aren't everything to everyone, but you know, a lot of people in OCB and SOLAS and GeoTraces work with aerosol data or depend on the fluxes from aerosols. So having those databases combined and easily accessible, I think, would be something that the SOLAS leadership could emphasize to BODC where all of these data are ultimately held um, to try to help improve the, I don't even know what the right data management term is, but availability. That's a great idea. I'll definitely pass that on. There is yeah, some Sure, that's true for any data. That's just yeah. the SOLAS data specifically. Yeah, so I can stress that the SOLAS data yeah. needs to be more that's easily available than I, it is. Yeah. I'm only aware of because I've been, I've, a few months ago, I was talking with Bill and Alex about this, and so I realize this is something that people are trying to do. And if it were a little more, if there was a little more push at the programmatic level, that might help make it happen. Okay, Mary Amina. Well, and also, in general, just to make clear to the newer uh, newcomers and more junior scientists in the OCB community, what the OC uh, the SOLAS data is, because you know, maybe it isn't obvious to everyone. You know, it's been a while since there have been a lot of SOLAS theme sessions at OCB. And so, you know, but generally data availability is, you know, I think just but all, all of the data, right? So over the last few days, I've been canvassing people who I meet and come up to. And several, especially the younger scientists, have said what they would really like is more international collaborations, that they're starting to feel sort of plugged into the US research scene, but not so much into the international one. And that's where SOLAS as an international research initiative could really offer help. And so I wanted to get some feedback on ways that might be useful to do that. So one idea would be Certainly to attend workshops is great, because a lot of the SOLAS workshops are heavily international, you know, a very small component of US scientists. So that's great if you want to meet others, but not everybody has time to just go gallivanting about attending every workshop. That seems interesting. So I was also thinking about on the website, we could have the SOLAS has an international website. We could put lists of both collaborators, so people working, not even collaborators, but say people working on denitrification. And then any researcher around the world who was interested could add their name. And if you wanted to start a collaboration, you could see other researchers. But maybe what would be more useful even is upcoming projects. So would you be interested in either looking at or contributing to such a website? If you get some sort of relatively large project funded to post it, like maybe a year or two in advance, essentially when you hear it's funded, to give people time to see if they would want to collaborate in some way. Is that of interest? It's much more likely to happen if I go to the IPO and say, yes, people want this, than if I just say it's an idea. OK, I see some nodding heads. Another thing that other countries do in where SOLAS is much more active is they have what they're called SOLAS days. So maybe every year, every year and a half, and this is countries much smaller than America, so they have what for them is the whole country, but for us I would imagine it would be more of a regional day where it's just a one-day conference where all researchers interested in SOLAS come and share their latest. So that sort of is the whole networking. And so I was thinking we could either do this before an ocean sciences meeting or an AGU meeting, or just having, say, the Northeast, you know, Boston region does one, and then maybe somewhere near Scripps does one. And is that something that people would be interested in attending? Fewer nods. <laughs> OK. Other, other ideas of how SOLAS could be useful? OK, well. 
is late and I know people want to go, so let me just say, if you want to join the SOLAS email list, Heather and Mary do a great job of forwarding some, many SOLAS emails to the OCB community, but if you want to get them directly, go to this website, the SOLAS website. You can also download a copy of the science plan to read about it in more detail. Sign up for the email list. If you have any news that you want to share with 2,400 researchers, feel free to email Stefan the Solas, it's solas at geomar.de. The email address is on the website. And you, he's happy to add, the Solas bulletins come out once a month, and he's happy to add any updates. If you have a new data set, if you have a cruise coming up, if you want to just you know, say hello to everybody, you can, you can put it on. And if you have any other ideas on how to increase the vibrancy of Solas, please contact me. Yeah. Um, Rachel's job as the U.S. Solash representative is to every year put in a, uh, a report from the U.S. Solash community. And so um, if you're doing anything in Solash, let her know about it, because <laughs> it will make her job a whole lot easier um, to, to know what's going on. And it will also allow her to see connections if they exist and, and put people together. But um, her job really, her one, her one real job that they, <laughs> they lean on her from from uh, the international office is to submit a U.S. SOLAS report every year um, of the best things that the U.S. community is doing in the SOLAS, in SOLAS science. Uh, not all of it, but the best things. So if you got a best thing, send it there. Uh, Last year, I just sort of chose my own favorite 10 uh, things, some conferences I had gone to, and people who answered some emails I sent. But I would love to hear what your exciting research is. Yes, Ken? So if we have something that's not, not an official SOLAS activity, but it is, you know, completely integrated and in line with SOLAS, do we, like, what, how do you, do you, do you want to hear about that? And do we I ask, would love like, to hear about that. In, mm -hmm. is, do you, is there like some Im, SOLAS imprimatur that we receive or? So SOLAS, the International Project Office is happy to give letters. I don't think NSF yeah. would like such letters, but yeah. they said if you no. submit no. a proposal and it's SOLAS related, they're happy to send a letter saying, you know, this is SOLAS related, it would be interest to the SOLAS community. If you, you know, in a paper, use the word SOLAS and say the abstract or the keyword, then people can search for that if they're looking for SOLAS research. We can definitely put it in the SOLAS newsletter. So I would say just to try to mention the word SOLAS somewhere on the website, on the product. This little SOLAS logo, that SOLAS logo that you can download on the, on the website there that you can put on your own website. There's not much of a gate here. So essentially, if you think it's SOLAS, you can say it's SOLAS. The, the international office will actually um, accept an application to be an approved SOLAS project. And you send them what you're doing, and they go, yes, you're SOLAS. So I mean, it's not, it's not anything real, but, it's, <laughs> but, it's, uh, but it's, it's, uh, it does allow everyone to see what you're doing in the community, and, and, and it does generate collaborations. That's, that's, the, that's the, the point of it. And just to reiterate what Bill said also, I talked about this email, this website for international collaborations, but definitely if you would like to be more connected in a field, just email me and I will pass it up the chain to the International Steering Committee and they can find out projects in other countries and let me know and it'll go back down. So until the website is set up or even after, if you like a more personal touch, just contact me. Okay, thanks to you guys all at the dinner.